The following represents a brief description of functionality found in X3 around bills of materials. Within X3, product design process flows are provided to help individuals better manage the product evolution. Within managing products, we can find that under the product master itself, there are several attributes associated with the product master file that begin to, to emphasize how the product drives through to the bill of materials. In this example, we're going to use a standard bicycle that makes reference to not only the product category of a finished product, but also provides reference to the actual bill of materials itself. If we scroll down on the right-hand side, we can find reference to something referred to as a production slip. The production slip gives us a composite view of the product and all of the sub-assemblies and or operations associated with that given top-level product. As we change our sites internally over to the correct site, in this instance, we're going to go to the manufactured site for this given product. And we're also going to use the appropriate routing and bill of material code. You can have as many of these codes as you like. And some of these are designed to help with design emphasis, production emphasis, replacement, maintenance, and the like. For this example, we're going to make reference to the production code. As we scroll down, on the left-hand side, we can see a complete listing of all of the components that are associated with this assembly. And if we go to a multi-level view of the product, we can begin to see that each one of the different operations has a number of different ap applicable associations to that. All right. Now, on the right-hand side, we can even see additional references to not only pictures of the products that are referenced, as well as individual items that can be associated in sub-assemblies throughout that bill of material. Looking further into the bills of materials, as we begin to manage the bill of material structure, we can see that it's broken down into several key classification or control point areas. One of those being the BOM codes. The next one is directly related to how we manage the bills of materials. You'll note that there are several different types that are in there. One of those is a production bill of material. The other one is a subcontract bill of material. And then third is something referred to as commercial bills of materials that are used for kits. We're going to look more specifically at bills of materials in X3. The one that we were looking at a few minutes ago made reference to a bicycle. As we look at the manufacturing bill of material for that bicycle in greater detail, we can see that X3 provides a series of lines that make reference to not only the component type, which can be, in this example, text, normal, byproduct, or a costing line, but we also have the ability to associate many different components and or sub-assemblies that can have unique and, and, um, and defined units of measure as well as quantities. Scrolling off to the right, we can see further information for each one of these lines that makes reference to unit of measure conversions, routing operations, and even how the quantities are associated with those lines. In this instance, we can see that these are proportionally linked quantities. So in fact, the more of these that you make, the greater the number will increase. And at the same time, we can also make reference to a fixed link quantity code. This will ensure that regardless of how many of these units you produce, it will always allocate a fixed quantity to that specific line. Some advanced functionality that is found within X3 is related to how the pick lists are managed, and in essence, if weighing scales are used as stations, and how those products are then associated with uh, sub-assemblies, if you will, as well as tolerances that are linked to that as well. Upon further review from each of these line items, we can then go further into what are referred to as the roundings and or the production slips for this. Each one of the bills of materials as well as roundings and products gives the user the ability to work with header text, footer text, as well as line level text where are appropriate. You can see that within the system, we can then merge lines, we can duplicate lines, and then we can drill out to the product master or even determine where else it might be used within the system. And finally, 
All bills and materials, as well as most other functions within the system and transactions, can be monitored from your own personalized dashboard or desktop. Note on the left-hand side, we can keep references and tabs on products that are in development, as well as bills and materials that are in development. The hyperlinks will take you out to those exclusive products and the versions associated with them so that you can take appropriate action for approvals and or changes as required. This concludes bill material functionality within SAGE X3.